coating your classic car with an under seal or a wax is probably one of the best things you can do to increase its life and protect it throughout winter months or in the rain when you're driving it uh, on the road. Now, this bus has been completely stripped of everything from underneath. It is the best time to apply a product. I'm Lee, this is Coombe Valley Campers, and today we're gonna to be showing you how to undercoat your classic car. Now the underside of Joe's bus is completely stripped, we can go ahead and apply the undercoat. But first, we've got to completely clean the underneath. And we're not giving it like a jet wash clean or a steam clean type uh, thorough degrease. We are removing the loose bits of dirt, detritus, just so we've got a good surface to apply the undercoat. So right now we're gonna be using some brushes, some um, wire wheels or some scotch pads just to make sure the surface is good, clean and free from any debris, ready to apply the product. Before we make a start, I just wanna do a little bit of a warning that undercoating your vehicle is a crappy, messy job. You are going to need some gear to help you. Uh, namely, some eye protection. And yes, I know I've got the big goofy ones. However, there's a bit of side protection for my eyes there. I'm wearing a hat. I've got some coveralls, um, but alternatively, you can use one of the all-in-one disposable paint suits. They're really, really good. Um, however, these are dual wash anyway, so I thought I'd just throw these on. Um, and then once they're all dirty, just chuck them back in the wash. Um, definitely some gloves. Um, what we're going to be using on the vehicle to clean it is this drill with a brush attachment. You may have seen this on a previous video of ours. I've actually used that on upholstery, decided it was too tough for upholstery. Um, so for this job, it's gonna be absolutely ideal. I'll show you that later. I have a selection of uh, wire brushes, all in different states of repair, but they're gonna be good just for getting in all the niggly bits or if there's any uh, scabby, rusty bits, we can finish off with that. Um, a general old, a uh, dustpan brush, it's gonna be really good, and for any other areas that I feel might need it, a bit of scotch spray. This vehicle has already had a coating of paint and a form of under seal as well. We are going to be adding to that. Um, there's no structural work that needs doing at this time, but we are giving this vehicle the best chance to have a protected underside for the next five, 10, 15, 20 years. I think, let's go get dirty. Right, that has now been done to a decent standard in terms of getting all the loose stuff off. Now I'll be getting out the compressor and the hose and I'll have just a, a blow off tool attachment and we'll get all of the dust off as best as we can, getting all the nooks and crannies, maybe even blow out the pipes also here, things like that. Um, and then we're on to the next stage, which is masking it up. This is, like I've said, a dirty job. And if you get overspray on any of the bodywork, it's not a problem because you can use um, like a, a brake cleaner or a panel wipe to get that off, not a problem at all. However, the more you can do to prevent that from happening, makes for an easier job afterwards. So once we've blown it down, we're gonna cover up pretty much everything in the workshop that is precious. Then we'll make basically a skirt around here and we'll weigh out the uh, with the skirt with maybe a battery or a wheel or something like that so it doesn't blow inwards because the moment you get the compressed air inwards all the skirt just wants to sort of suck in so that's the next stage i think mask back on goggles back on i'll get the compressor out and then we'll blow all this down Now everything's clean, 
and we've covered up pretty much everything else in the workshop. The things that we don't want to get covered in under seal. We have to make a skirt round the vehicle. And if you have a look over there, that vehicle is covered with a plastic sheet over the top. We're going to be doing almost an inverse skirt from on the bottom. So we're going to lay the plastic sheeting out and then we're going to bring up the sides to stick onto this tape. Now, I appreciate this job is a lot easier for me right now because I've got a lift to put the vehicle up on and we've already stripped the stuff down. If you're doing this when the vehicle's on actual stands or on ramps or whatever it might be, um, you may not need to go to these lengths. However, it's a good idea at least to mask off the areas that you don't want covered in um, gunk, really. We are going to be protecting the wiring. You'll notice that we've pinned up some wiring underneath. That's all gonna get brought down then covered. The central column, which is the heater channel under the center of the vehicle, that's gonna get covered in plastic. Um, I can't go around every nut and bolt, so I'm gonna to have to be pretty good with my aim. However, once I've finished underneath, I know, for example, I'm gonna get some black overspray on this lip here of this arch. So all it's gonna need is a bit of brake clean or a bit of panel wipe on a clean rag, and then you just wipe it off whilst it's still uh, in its wet stage. It won't be set, so to speak. So yeah, we're gonna spend a bit of time now. We're gonna be masking up underneath and around the sides, and then we'll be bringing up the skirt. Then I think we'll have a spot of lunch and get straight on with applying the underseal. We are now down to the good stuff, or the dirty stuff. Basically, all the hard work and effort you've put in by uh, descaling, cleaning, and sorting out the chassis, making it free from dirt, is now all gonna get covered up, but it's gonna look great when it's done, and it will prolong the life of your vehicle. The product we are using today is this TetroSeal Wax Oil and Rust Proofing Solution. Now, this isn't a video endorsed or sponsored by Tetrasil. However, I've used this in the past. I've also used wax oil and other products in the past, um, all to good effect. They're effectively the same thing. I'm not gonna say they are the same. I don't upset anybody. However, this is a well-proven product. We are going to be applying it today using a Schutz style gun and an old Raptor paint bottle. Now, if you can buy this in a one litre bottle, like this size, do so and refill it using a five litre bottle like this. It's very difficult to um, spray it out of this bottle for a start. It's just very easy to handle it in a bottle this size because you can just screw the gun in the top and spray as and where you need to. And also the aim of this is pretty good too. The alternative way of applying the wax seal is with one of these refillable bottles. Now, if uh, you may be a hobby DIYer and you've bought a, compressor for, a small compressor for your garage, chances are it might have come with a selection of accessories that might include a bottle like this. So you'll fill up this sort of bottle and spray out um, the solution into all the cavities. We're not gonna be using that. We're gonna be using this method, using a smaller bottle that I'm happy to refill and yeah, decanting it from the five litre bottle. When you're using this product, make sure that it's either warm or a fairly decent day because uh, this can get gloopy and thick when it's cold. Um, two ways around that, you could put this in a warm room and make the solution a bit runnier, or you can thin it out. According to the guidelines on the back, it says that you can thin it out to, where are we now? Let me have a quick look at it. It can be thinned up to 20% white spirit. So that's an alternative there. Um, and what we're gonna be doing is basically 
spraying this into the cavities and on the complete underside of the vehicle as explained before. So going through a couple of directions, ensure the surface is uh, to be treated is dry and clean from dirt and grease, which we've done. Mask off the areas, we've done that. Avoid overspray on driveways. Um, cover all areas, that's exactly what we've done behind us. We've given ourselves a little tent so we're not going to get overspray anywhere. Uh, shake tin well before use, which we shall do. And for the use of using these guns, it's recommended to have a pressure of between 70 and 90 psi or 5 to 6 bar. So make sure your compressor gauge is set to that. Okay, so when rust proofing um, through existing access holes into the vehicle, sorry, when rust proofing, apply the wax oil through existing access holes. And by that it's saying, don't just start drilling holes willy nilly into your vehicle chassis to spray this into, use existing holes. Because that's where your water is going to be getting in anyway. Uh, following a complete anti rust treatment, allow the vehicle to stand in a well ventilated area for three to four hours with open windows so excessive, excessive vapors can escape. Um, and that's about it, really. So a very good product, make sure it's warm and runny, the solution. If not, it can be thinned um, and you can decant it into one of these bottles. So let's get on with that. I'm gonna suit up with gloves, mask, coveralls, hat and goggles. And the mask is, um, for me, because of the particles and the dust as well. Um, if you're not in a well lit area, I'd recommend you buy like a torch maybe, a cheap torch and strapping it to the top of this. Uh, lighting can be quite difficult when you're covered up like this. And what I've proved, done in the past is like taped or even cable tied a torch onto the top of the gun so you can really see where you're getting into, but cover that in a plastic also because everything is gonna get covered in this wax oil. So enough of my jibber jabber, let's get this bottle filled and get on with under sealing the vehicle. So like I said, lots of ventilation and then actually refilling the one litre bottle is a really good excuse to come out, clean your goggles, clean the torch if you've got one, take a breather and then go back in for the next round. So we're on to the next bit. Exciting, but grim bit over. Time for the reveal. As suspected, we've got a little bit of bleed through on the paintwork, but we can just wipe that back with a bit of spirits or brake clean or panel wipe. Overall, extremely happy with the color with it, you know, with the coverage, should I say. We're probably gonna need to touch up a couple little places, now I can see, but with just, you know, a bit of well-ventilated area, no cover, I'll just be able to, you know, fill in a couple of spots here and there, but overall, super chuffed. What do you think? With all the uh, application complete, my last job now, all of the curtains come down, is to just go over with the torch, just make sure I haven't missed any areas, Normally you might miss a spot that's sort of out of reach, sort of up in that area. Um, I'm going back to say these jacking points, get a bit of under seal in there. And yeah, just any areas that I may have missed or might have been covered up by the plastic sheeting really. So what I'm gonna do, go and do all of those 
and then we'll clean up all around the edges and show you the finished result. And there we have it, a completely undersealed and one color vehicle. Um, dirty job, but a very, very valuable job as well. A tin of five liter wax oil, Tetra Seal, whichever you want to call it, a wax slash oil rust proofing solution. You're looking anywhere between 35 and 50 pounds in the UK and five liters has covered pretty much every square inch of the bottom of this vehicle and to a good standard. We've not kept it patchy, you'll see at the end, uh, you might have seen at the end where I've just gone round with a torch just highlighting any bits I've missed because once the curtain's down you can get a different perspective and different angles of the vehicle. But really, really happy. Um, I've still got to go around, do a couple of little bits of cleaning and everything else, but a very, very valuable thing you can do to your vehicle if you get the opportunity. And it's not just old vehicles you can do it to. I have waxed, oiled, or done an under seal treatment to brand new transporters, for example, because manufacturers, new manufacturers, or manufacturers of new vehicles don't often go to town when it comes to under seal. And if you want your vehicle to last, you spent a lot of money on it. It's not a bad idea to do it. And it comes in black or clear in most cases. So thank you once again for joining us. If you need to buy that, we'll endeavor to put it on our website. And if we have, it's in the link below. See you next time.